Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Blackburn and I will give today just a quick update on the compost pile that we, the hot compost that we made uh, three weeks ago. Uh, a, a little bit of development on the cold compost pile and I will just give, uh, show you a quick look on my European Nightcrawler earthworm vermicomposting and the red wiggler, the Isenia andre uh, beans of vermicomposting also. So let's stick with me and I'll show you. Alright, so quickly I will show you now uh, the time lapse of when I made this compost. The compost pile um, was made with grass clippings and uh, a little bit of leaves, uh, paper, shredded paper and cardboard shredded also. Um, the compost pile started about one meter high and now it's about half the size. Um, so just layer by layer, layer, the proportion that I used was uh, one to one approximately uh, between um, grass clippings and uh, paper. So I made that in two days because I was out of uh, out of material um, of browns. So the next day I, I, I got a lot of uh, shredded paper and um, continued the, the pile and finish up this pile, wetting in between also the every step of the of the, the process just making approximately a ratio between one to one of shredded paper and grass clippings so this is more carbon uh, than uh, should be needed but it's always good to you know err on the side of of the carbon to be able to stabilize the compost well so this is how the compost looks today uh, three weeks later, uh, there's a good level of decomposition happening. The, the compost is already cooling down. At some point, it was 60 degrees. Now it's about 50 or 45 to 50 degrees. Um, and uh, it's, it's uh, in the process of cooling down, and it will start the maturing. And about a week from now, it will start maturing. And I, I guess one and a half months. Uh, to two months more, this will be ready to sieve and use. Yeah, I'll just show you the the general aspect of the compost pile. Um, not too bad at all. So when I turn it, I will show you again the material. Yeah, just show you how it looks like three weeks old compost. So this is just a quick show of uh, time lapse of turning the compost pile today. Um, very quickly, just to show you the process, I do this once a week. It's very quick, it's in less than five minutes I, I can do it. Hi, so I'm here with the compost that I made three weeks ago. This compost is made with grass clippings and, um, and paper, shredded paper. Proportional, uh, proportion of the material is approximately one to one, um, but the, the, the book density of the paper is very low, so I would guess in dry weight it would be something like two to one, maybe. Uh, as we do it at home scale, we are not really aiming for precision on these ratios. We just want to make sure that we have enough browns to stabilize the greens. So uh, I would say it was successful. The smell of the compost is um, um, very mild, I would say, as you turn it. And it, it, it's a little bit like silo. It's typical when you use grass. It becomes a little bit like silo. Uh, this is the third turn that I'm making. And uh, you you just seen the, the um, time lapse of turning it. It was quick turn. I've done it uh, every week since we make it and uh, just wanted to show you an update on how it's progressing. I expect that in one and a half to two months this compost will be completely ready for using. And so far I'm very satisfied with the progress. It seems that uh, the decomposition is accelerating a lot 
temperature is about 45 to 50 degrees. It reached over 60 at some point, but now it's 45 to 50. And this is um, how is it how it's going. At this point, if you wanted to use this compost for uh, feeding the worms, it's fine because it's already cooling down. So anything that is pre-composted, you can give it to the worms. Uh, but uh, you should avoid giving to the worms in, uh, if it's going to heat up too much in the worm bin. Uh, and if you do so, try to do it on the surface and not um, not mixing uh, too much with the, with the worm bin. But this is actually uh, working quite well. Um, because of the heat, we also water in this every two or three days to keep it moist. Uh, the structure of the material is very good, so there's a good porosity on the on the material. It has not become a paste, so um, I'm very happy with the porosity. Uh, airflow is good, moisture content is good, and yeah, working well so far. So, uh, just word of caution: every time you use uh, low carbon to nitrogen ratio material like uh, food waste or uh, grass clippings try to use uh, a good amount of uh, high carbon to nitrogen ratio material in this case the paper the shredded paper so it will stabilize it and it will avoid the problems of giving leachate and bad smell okay so now i will show you uh, because i had so much uh, shredded paper i started using this shredded paper uh, for the cat litter so this is the, the, the bedding for the cats, and uh, the idea is the, 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 the residue from the cats would balance the, the carbon to nitrogen ratio uh, immediately, so I could directly compost this uh, on my garden. So the problem I had was I just took this off to the garden wet and added a little bit of soil as inocula for doing hot composting, and I find that the smell was a little bit unpleasant so um, I, I made a, a quick adaptation from this and um, the improv improvisation I did was the material that I had to try to hide a little bit the smell from this from this uh, cut litter was the the cold compost that I had so I took all my cold compost and mixed with the with the the bedding for the uh, the, 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 the the shredded paper that had uh, the cat litter cat, it had the, 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 the poop from the cat and the, smell, and the urine from the cats. So here is the material uh, after I, uh, I did this and then um, mix. So it, it really helped to redu uh, remove the smells, but I guess uh, now I will have to wait the full length for the decomposition of the, of the paper. Uh, and whereas the other material was already halfway through the decomposition, but as an emergency process to reduce the smell, I use it like this. But anyway, it's just not not the, not by the book, but you work what what you have. So I will just show you now quickly. This is a two months old, um, two months old uh, Dendrobaena veneta, the the European out night crawler. These arrived as cocoons, so these are two months old uh, uh, worms. And um, I've been feeding them kitchen waste. Uh, the paper is all, almost already fully consumed from two months ago. And I'm, uh, uh, I will need to add more paper soon next week. I will, I will add more paper to this uh, to get, give it more bedding. They, they have been uh, having coffee um, and kitchen waste, uh, including watermelon. Every time I have watermelon, I give to them or the, the red wigglers. So this is what they look like two months old. They're very healthy. Uh, just just giving you an update. If you followed up the, the last video on this, um, they were uh, very small. I, I did one video one month ago on these worms. Um, and they, they yeah, so now they, they, this is what they look after two months. So next I will show you the, the the red wigglers. Let me jump to the red wigglers. These are the Dendobaina veneta, European night crawlers. Okay, so here, here you go, the, the red wigglers. I have two boxes of red wigglers, and you can see really the coffee that I have here. 
sometimes you when you raise the coffee they're all below the coffee they really like the coffee the paper there it's almost consumed the the castings are ready to for sieving by the way for harvesting but i will not harvest these castings because i don't want to lose any cocoons because i'm in the process of multiplying these worms as much as i can so uh, you can see some baby worms there uh, in the process of multiplying these worms i'm not harvesting the the the, the castings uh, it's a vermicompost I'm just splitting the boxes every two, every two months to get more and more. And I have already some people asking me to, to, to because it's so hard to obtain these worms here in Oman. Some people are already asking me if, they, uh, if I can provide some worms for them. And then I will start giving away some worms soon enough. So, yeah, the population is very, very high. Um, more than This is watermelon here. You will see all the worm bowl. There you go. Uh, they love the watermelon. Every time we have watermelon, they, they, they group on top of it. And yeah, there's quite a lot of worms there and even cocoons. I, I've read, I read online that uh, the, the worms avoid uh, uh, putting cocoons when they have too much to eat. But I find that in the watermelon, the, they, they tend to have quite a lot of cocoons when you add the watermelon. They're very happy. So anyway. So uh, uh, also I want to reduce the density because high density is known to reduce also the rate of reproduction and, I, and because I want to multiply this as much as I can. So uh, I am uh, I'm going to split this again next week and I'll keep you posted on that. So this is all I had to bring for you today. I um, hope you enjoyed. Just an update. The quiz from the course uh, will be based on the carbon to nitrogen ratio calculations, not from this update. This update is just to show you a little bit what is happening and uh, what is the progress since the last uh, uh, practical before the exam. Thank you very much.